Okay, Shalom, Shalom, Master, Rebbe Kadash, want to start off by giving our praises to Yehawah, Bahashem, Yehawah Shai, Bahashem, Rukak, Wadash. I had to catch this, right? So I had to make a quick little video about this, right? And this is what we're saying, like, you got to be spiritual to be able to see these things because this is the way that the Lord works and this is the way that the Bible is. It's, it's written like it's in code. So you have to be spiritual to understand these things because the Bible is for who? The Israelites to understand these things, right? We have that spiritual connection with the Lord to be able to understand things. I give you an example. It's like if you got, if you're from a certain hood, right? Y'all have different slang words that y'all use, but y'all understand it. You see what I'm saying? Like, like um, the whole thing with YSL, Young Thug, you know, they, they use the word slime. So a person on the outside, this guy right here, which is the um, president of um, China, the Chi um, or whatever. the I forgot what they call him, though, but he's the head pretty much, right? A king, right? Um, he may not understand if I talk to my brother and I say something about slime. But my brother understands it, right? Because you have to have that connection to understand it. So when we say things, you know, a lot of people call the Hebrew Israelites. They say that we're making up things when we're just giving you like similarities and things to watch out for. But you have to be spiritual. We're pointing out things and clues that lead up to the bigger picture, the whole picture. But you have to be spiritual to pick up these things, man. So this is a perfect example. It says China warns of World War Three, right? Which we know the Bible talks about World War Three. It's not gonna say World War Three in it, right? So that's why you have to be able to pick up these clues. Now watch this. It says with nuclear sword hanging over our heads. That's so man, that's so spiritual right there. So brothers that's been in this truth, hearing this, they already know where I'm finna go and they already know what you know what to expect and they know what this means right now for brothers that don't know then you finna get the answer right so nuclear sword hanging over our heads where do we see that in the bible right so this is how and i ain't saying that this is how we know we're correct and this is the only thing but this helps us um you know match up the pieces to get the full picture of what this is talking about right so Sometimes you hear brothers, they, they argue about this. They say, well, it's the fire and brimstone and the second death by fire and brimstone. Is that talking about asteroids coming from out the sky? Is it talking about volcanoes, super volcanoes erupting? Is it talking about nuclear war? We say that it's talking about nuclear war. And then we have things like this, which is just little small clues that also in the spirit, if you could understand, that helps us put together the full picture. So it says over Putin's plan to send nukes. To Belarus, right? So the nuclear sword hanging over our heads that he's talking about, that China is warning, is the nukes. You see what I'm saying? But it's being called sword. So when we say Esau was blessed with the sword and we say, and then we point at him having power over these nuclear weapons that he that the Lord gave him the technology to create, you guys say that we're delusional and we're just making things up. No. It all comes together. And now you see examples in real life of, you know, of what well, I ain't saying real life, but you see examples today where China is also calling a nuke, uh, um, a nuclear missile. They're calling it a sword because we say that what sword just means weapon. So Esau was blessed with weapons. So that's not why, you know, that's why it's not that hard to put two and two together to know who Esau is. Now, watch this. Watch this. Isaiah 34, right? Verse six. No, verse five. Watch this. It says, for my sword should be bathed in heaven. What do we say that sword is? It's a weapon. It's not a literal sword, but it's a nuclear missile that's going to. And the reason why it's bathed in heaven, right? Because when you get a nuclear missile, it comes out the silo, right? You have the rocket, the delivery system that gets it into space, which are the skies, upper skies, which we call heavens, right? The heavens, right? And it goes up there and then it comes back down, whether it's, you know, whether it's hypersonic or, or not, it comes down and it hits its target. So it's like it's like an airplane is being bathed in the heavens. A rocket, you know, spaceship is being bathed in the heavens. This nuclear missile, which is a weapon, which means that it is a sword, is being Going up into the sky, being bathed in the heavens, and then it comes down and hit its target. Let's keep going. Behold, it should come down upon a Dumian, which is Edom. 
it should come down on Edom and upon the people of my curse to judgment, right? So what does this say on your screen? It says nuclear sword hanging over our heads. If something's hanging over your heads, that means that it's above you, right? So it has to come down on you. So basically what he's saying is directly from Isaiah 34, verse 5. I read again. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Adumium and upon people of my curse to judgment. Or this could be a spiritual sign that what? This is this prophecy is about to be fulfilled. Now that he's saying it, which he's going to play a part in it, China's going to play a part in it, right? With their ally Russia, because he's saying over Putin's plan and Putin is Russia. And we know going to Ezekiel 38, you know, it's prophesied that Russia is going to um, play a part in destroying Mystery Babylon, which is America. Which are, you know, ran and controlled the ruling class or the Edomites. And the Israelites are in slavery. But you're going to have Israelites that's going to be caught up in the judgment. You're going to have all nations that's going to be caught up in that judgment. But there's salvation only for the elect of Israel. It says, now let's keep going. Verse 6, for my sword, for my, for the sword of the Lord. What's the sword of the Lord? You're thinking, so you will read this, or why keep taking Christians to read this and just say, it's just talking about a literal sword. It's talking about a weapon. It's filled with blood, and it is made with fat and fatness, right? So when this nuclear missile come down, it's going to be a lot of bloodshed. And it's now watch this. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats and the fat of kidneys and rams. And the Lord has a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Adumium, right? Why? What does these animals represent? Sacrifice. That's why it says the Lord has a sacrifice. So the Lord is telling you, the Bible is telling you the word. It's telling you that there's going to be a sacrifice and it's going to come. Nuclear missiles are going to be used. To sacrifice something. And where? It says in the land in, in Basra. But Basra is not even talking about ancient Basra. Because you got to remember that the people are there are people before they're a place. Right? In a great slaughter in the land of Adumium. But the Edomites aren't in their homeland no more. They have spread it and expanded. So it's calling this land the land of Adumium. Why is the land of Adumium? Because Adumium, which is Edom. Because Edom has power over this land. So it's their land. And the Lord is calling this place Basra because there are people before there are place. So Jerusalem could be used to talk about the Israelites or it could be used to talk about the actual land. So in this case, it's talking about where they're at and where, where they have power over. The lands that they have power that's theirs. So even in the land of Israel... Adumium Edom has power over that land too, but they're claiming to be the Israelites, but they're not. So there's going to be a sacrifice in that land too. And that land's going to be destroyed. That's why when you get to Isaiah 60, 61, it talks about the land having to be rebuilt. Why would it have to be rebuilt? Because that land's going to be destroyed. You know, we're going to go to that. Um, let me just get the point. Verse 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance in the year of recompense in the controversy of Zion. So the, so it's saying that there's going to be a very controversy of Zion. What's the controversy? Who is Zion? Who's the Israelites? Haven't we been seeing that? So we've been seeing that being fulfilled. So this could be a spiritual sign that what's going to come next is verse 4 and, and, and 5 and 6. That sword, that nuclear missile is going to come down. See, this is how you see the signs, man. But they're saying this is being done because it's the Lord's vengeance. This is going to be the Lord taking vengeance and he's doing it for his people. Right now, let's go to Isaiah 61. Let's stop at Isaiah 60. First. See, these are the signs you have to be able to watch out for these things. And then at the same time, this is just showing that, you know, don't make them feel, don't let them make you feel like you wacky or tacky because we have these different signs that we look out for when they can't see them. They're not spiritual to see them. You can receive these things because you're spiritual. You know, Vocab Malone, Dr. Brown, all these guys want to say, you're just making things up. No, it seems made up to them because they're not spiritual to see these things. Don't let them throw you off their game, off your game just because they can't see these things. We can see these things. I can read China Warns of World War III with a nuclear sword hanging over our heads. And then Isaiah 34 is going to pop up. See, we actually read and study the Bible. They don't. Right. So they don't understand prophecy. We understand prophecy. They don't. They could read and study the Bible. I'll take that. Back. They could read and study the Bible, but they don't understand it. They don't understand prophecy. They have to come get the answers from us. If they humble themselves down and open their ears, then they get the actual answers. And then they know the truth, too. But they pride. They too prideful and they don't want what we saying to be true. 
they're praying that it's not true what we're saying. But so, at some point in time, when these missiles start falling, these nukes, they going to have to bow down. They're going to have to get down or lay down. You read about that in Luke 19, right? 27. Right? So when I read this, I can say, oh, that sounds just like Isaiah 34. A star being bathed in heaven, which means that it's hanging over your head and it's coming down. They hit who? Adumium. Right? So now let's stop at Isaiah 60, right? Then let's go straight to the point. Um, I think it's at the end right here. Isaiah 60, verse 10. Right? No, verse 2. Let's start at verse. Man, it's a lot. <laughs> Let's start at verse 9. Surely the owls shall wait for me and the ships of tarnish first to bring thy sons from far, thy silver and thy gold with them into the name of the Lord thy God and to the Holy One of Israel because he has glorified thee. So even when we get in the kingdom, you will have Israelites, right, that scattered throughout the whole world. But they're going to be being brung. The other nations are going to say, look, man, you guys are the true Israelites. So this shows that they're going to have to get down or lay down. They're going to have to admit that we are the true Israelites. And when they do, they're going to start bringing other Israelites to us. You see what I'm saying? Back to the land. It says, in the sons of the strangers, but the sons of the strangers, the non-Israelites, shall build up thy walls and their kings, right? Because we only got one king. Our king going to be Yahweh Shai, right? But, of course, King David's going to be back in his lot and, and on and on and on. There's an order, right? It says, she minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor I have, have I had mercy on thee. So it says the sons of the strangers going to build up thy walls. Why is the walls in Israel going to have to be built back up? Because that place is going to be destroyed indefinitely. So they're going to have to go into slavery to build our walls back up. The same way we went in slavery and built up America. Verse, 30, verse 11, therefore thy gates should be open continually, they shall not be shut day nor night, that man may bring into thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. Now watch this. Now this is why I call it slavery. Because slave is a different, to be a butler and a servant, you got a choice. You could go home, you could quit your job, right? To be a slave, you don't have a choice. That's the difference. Verse 12, for the nation and kingdom that would not serve thee, yeah, those nations shall be utterly perished. So all other nations are going to have to be forced to serve us. And if they don't, they're going to be wasted. They, they're they going to perish, be utterly wasted. So that's that's what? That's slavery, right? So um, verse 14, straight to the point. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at thy soles of the feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. So it didn't say the sons of those that afflicted us are, are going to believe and be saved too. They're going to believe because they're going to come bow knee down to us. That don't mean that they're going to get the promise that was promised only to the Israelites or salvation or they're going to inherit the kingdom. It says the sons of them that afflicted us are going to come bending and knee to us. We know who afflicted us. So those people, the Edomites, the Moabites, Ishmaelites, all those people are going to come bending a knee to the Israelites, not be joined into inheriting the kingdom with the Israelites. It don't say that. You can't have two things at the same time. I mean, and, and it's just so much more um, in Isaiah, but I'm trying to get straight to the point. Let's go to the next one. Isaiah 61. Right, straight to the point. Straight to the point. Verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes and oil of joy for mourning, a garment of praises for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the plenty of the Lord, that he might be glorified. It says, and they shall build up the oasis. So our land, Israel right now, is a habitat, but that place is going to become a wasteland. By what? We just told you. What you seen on your screen? Nuclear? warfare right it says they shall raise up the former destinations they shall repair the way cities the destinations of many generations and this is how we're going to do it and strangers shall stand and feed your flock and the sons of the aliens should be your plowman and vine dress see this is what y'all don't want to admit this is what these other people this is what they hate they don't want to admit that the Bible prophesied that Israelites are going to inherit the kingdom and other people are going to go into slavery under the Israelites. They don't want to admit that. I'm reading it. This is a future prophecy. 
but ye shall be named priest of the Lord. So it's showing you a difference. It says, but, but you are going to be named priest of the Lord. Man shall call you ministers of the God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles and in their glory shall ye boast themselves because whatever they have worth anything, that's why our gates are going to be open. They're going to be, we're going to take ownership back over those things. They're going to be bringing those things to our gates to give to us, to offer to us, right? Because of this, for I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery. Um, no, no, I'll, I'll skip one. Verse seven, for your shame, ye shall have double. And for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in the land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be into them. So we had to go through this transatlantic slave trade. And even to this day, the things that we go through, um, African-Americans, uh, Latinos, and Native Americans. So we're going to have double for our shame. Right. For the Lord love judgment and hate robbery for burnt offering. So all the riches on the earth belongs to the Lord, which means it belongs to his people. All the riches that these other people got, they have stolen from the Israelites. Right. Um, verse nine, when we get straight to the point, it says, And their seed shall be known upon the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. And all that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. Look at that. Ain't that great? Let's clap it up for it. So it's saying that the Lord has blessed the seed. Not all people on earth. It's saying that he blessed a seed. What, what's that seed? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You have to go through that bloodline. You can't just stop at Abraham. You can't just stop at Isaac. You have to go through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the seed. Which you get the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the seed that he blessed. It says we sh our seed should be known among the Gentiles. Not... Well, we really don't know who's seed, and that tells you that this ain't about just whoever believes. It's about a seed, man. And then from that seed is about who believes, but you have to go through that seed first. And then you could go through who believes and who doesn't believe in that seed of Jacob. But you have to go through that seed line first. You see, because how would our seed be known among the Gentiles if you if you're saying that other nations are being saved. What does Gentiles could mean? Israelites or non-Israelites? Sometimes when it says Gentiles, it's talking about Israelites. Sometimes when it says Gentiles, it's talking about non-Israelites. You can look that up on the definition of Gentiles on Wikipedia and it'll tell you that. So, you can't say that an Edomite is going to inherit the kingdom and then he comes from the seed of Edom, but now he's an Israelite. It don't work that way. You are what you come from. You are the seed. If you come from a seed of Edom, you are an Edomite forever. If you come from the seed of Israel, you are an Israelite forever. And the seed that the Lord blessed was the seed of Israel. With that, I want to give out salvation to give our praises to Yahweh by Shimon Yahweh Shai by Shimon Kadash. Salvation to the Elect Shalom.